Hey guys, this is Bill. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going through the concept of order statistics with you guys. And I'm going to use uniform distribution as an example to illustrate this concept. So let's assume that we have a variable x which follow the standard uniform distribution with the minimum being 0 and the maximum being 1. And we do n draws from this distribution. So we will have n numbers that are identically and independently distributed from the standard uniform distribution. Okay, and now let's order these n numbers with the smallest one being x bracket 1 and the second smallest one being x bracket 2 and later on I'm going to refer them as x1 and x2 respectively. So the largest number is xn. Alright, and each of these n numbers are actually still random numbers so we may be interested in their distributions and from their distributions we can find things like the expectation of let's say xn and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Well, so let's say we are interested in the expectation value of xn. How do we do that? First of all, we need to find the cumulative density function of xn. So when xn is smaller than y, we know that xy, x2, all the way up to xn are all smaller than y, correct? So this CDF is actually y to the power of n. Okay, so we will be able to find the, CD, the PDF of xn at value y. That is just to differentiate the probability with respect to y. So that will be n multiply y to the power of n minus 1, correct? So the expectation of xn can be easily computed since we now know the PDF of xn, that is to integrate from 0 to 1, y multiply to the density function, which is this, correct? So after the integration, you will realize that the answer is n over n plus 1. So I will attach the detailed working in the link down below in the description, so you don't have to worry about all the computation details. So now, let's move on to the expectation of x1. And now, we relax this assumption of the uniform distribution with a minimum being a and a maximum being b. So this is more general than a standard uniform case. Well, so let's still find the CDF of x1, okay? And you realize that this CDF of x1 is actually 1 minus p with x1 being bigger or equal to y. And when x1 is bigger than y, we know that x2, x3, all the way to xn will be bigger than y. So this, com this probability can be converted to 1 minus p x bigger than y to the power of n. And since now we have changed the range of the uniform distribution, we know that this y minus a divided by b minus a is the probability of this, correct? So we just need to sub that in. Okay, so from here we are able to compute the density function of x1 at the value of y. I'm going to leave out the computation detail as I will attach a document that writes the detail of all the computation so you don't have to worry about it. Right now I'm going to tell you that the density function is actually n over b minus a multiply b minus y divided by b minus a to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so now with this density function, we are able to compute the expectation value of x1. So let's continue with that. So the expectation of x1 is that integrate y 
multiply to the density function. All right, let's just use this to denote the density function. All right, and we need to integrate from a to b since now our distribution is uniform distribution with a minimum of a and a maximum of b. All right, don't forget about that. Okay, so here we use a technique that is called integration by parts. So the first thing is to copy down y and then integrate the density function. So that will give you the cumulative probability, which is, if you remember correctly, it will be 1 minus 1 minus this. But don't worry about these computation details. They are not that important. The most important thing is for you to understand a concept. So if you do integration by parts, you will realize that you just need to compute this integral. Which honestly isn't that hard. So after this integration by part, if you do everything carefully, you should arrive at the answer that the expectation of x1 is just a plus b minus a divided by n plus 1. Okay, 